Okay, you'll we'll have to use your imagination. I have a few announcements. We wish Audrey Rummel a happy birthday this Thursday. And I don't believe I told you all what I ever did with the eyeglasses, did I? No. Okay. So I tried to deliver those glasses for all I was worth. I drove to the state um, Lions Club office, and there's a big sign, Building for Lease. I'm like, what am I going to do with all these glasses? So finally I saw a sign in Mount Harrisburg that said, Lions Club Pancake Breakfast. I said, aha. <laughs> so we drove up there on a Saturday, and we said, I'm not buying pancakes unless you take these glasses. <laughs> So um, then I asked her what they do with them. She said all the glasses, no matter where they're collected, go to New Jersey, where they have people there who repair them, clean them up, put them nicely together, and then they are distributed. She said most of them do go to third world countries where people don't have any glasses. And for those of us who wear glasses, you know any pair is better than no pair. So um, that's where our, I think we ended up with close to 70 pairs of glasses. So she opened up the back of her van and showed me that she had many pairs of glasses. Most that were like all bundled together with rubber bands and all of ours were like in cases or bundled in paper and that stuff. So I felt good about that. She said, thank you very much. Um, we still need volunteers, like two or three, for the Easter sunrise service breakfast cleanup. So you don't have to be there early, but you would have to be there, leave the service a few minutes before it's over, and then go and uh, help serve and clean up. It would take 60 to 90 minutes. Um, we are the host of the breakfast, and this year we've gotten off the hook for having to um, prepare the breakfast, so all we need is a few volunteers, but I only have one so far, so please let's not leave me hanging for that. Um, I also need a few people from Messiah to go to St. Peter's on Monday, Thursday because we don't have quite enough people to do the readings there. So if some of you would consider perhaps coming for Monday Thursday, you'll be able to participate in having communion and also the readings that we have. That's at 7 p.m. on Thursday. How many of you have received your newsletter? Either in the mail or email. How many of you have read it? Okay, please uh, read your newsletter. There's all kinds of good info in there. Um, Please say a special, an extra prayer this week for Marie Miller, April Bechtel, and Sharon Blizzard. Um, she's the wife of Pastor Rob. Um, unfortunately, they, uh, when they drained fluid off her lungs, it was full of cancer cells. So please be praying for her that her new medicine will work well. Our drive through event yesterday was um, well attended. We didn't get slammed the way that I thought we would, but it, it really was nice. I was able to walk a few bags around the neighborhood. We invited people who were attending a birthday party at the fire hall to come and do a walkthrough. And it, that was very cute because some of the golf teams wanted a bag and some candy, so that was kind of fun. And I think that's all my announcements. Do we have any from you all? The um, Newport Halifax Barbecue Chicken Sale is Saturday. Just want to remind everyone if you want to ask for the barbecue chickens, the sale supports the Newport Halifax Archaeology Dig. The dig it's a big deal. Students from uh, Indiana College and different sections will be there for 15 days. So Saturday, starting at 11 o'clock. Okay, very good. So yes. So our church is actually one of the churches that's helping to sponsor that archaeological dig as far as the food goes. Ladies Aid will be asking for donations because they'll be supplying breakfast for those 15 days. No, for seven days, but that's, the, you know, that's still feeding how many people? 20, or, or, I'm planning on 24. 24, pe 24 active college kids were feeding for seven days. A big hot <laughs> breakfast. So that's a lot of food that we're going to need. So please be watching for the Ladies' Aid. Uh, Rose has already planned out a lovely menu for them. And by supporting the barbecue chicken this Saturday? At the high school. At, at the high school. Okay, we can also help them. So that's exciting to have them coming to our area. Any other announcements? Dave? Can just please add Rachel Zeger to the prayer list? Yeah. Do you know how to spell the last name? Z-E-A-G-E-R. Come 
another a colleague at work, and they've done a mass on her lung, and uh, they're doing all kinds of tests this weekend. So. Sally Ann, I see you sitting here. Do I need to text you? Yes, please. Okay. I need to text you to give me those names. Okay. All right. Just check. Just check. I don't usually have that luxury. Okay. I'll text you when you. Okay. Wonderful. All right. Let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Most merciful God, we confess that we are bondage to sin, sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what you have done, by what you have not done, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will. And walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and all who offer here and online their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Our hymn of praise is hymn 108. And we decided last week that you can hum as long as you keep your lips together. If I hear any words, we're going to have to shut it down. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.
as I read the processional gospel, that will be where we would normally wave the palms. And then the bold print, the Hosanna verse there, that would be for you all to say together when we get to it. Okay? When Jesus and his disciples were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter, you will find there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing, untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take, them, take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. And those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple, and when he looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection. He lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 through 9. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn back away. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. So who will declare me guilty? Here ends our first reading. As has been our Lenten practice, we're going to split the psalm into the two sides of the church. And we'll begin with the epistle side. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. For I am consumed with sorrow, and also in the blood of my mother. For my life is wasted with grief, and my ears with sign. My spirit fails me because of affliction, and my arms are consumed. I am the Lord of all my enemies, the treasure of my neighbors, the treasure of my
The second reading for today comes from Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Here ends our second reading. If you would recite with me the Lenten verse found on page 63, it begins with, Return to the Lord. Ready, set, go. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, abounding in steadfast love. I'm going to ask those that are doing the reading to come forward. And please, um, if you don't mind removing your mask and speaking into the microphone, you're hurt, or else speaking just as loud as you can. You will be competing with a little bit of background dramatization sounds. So this is the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 14th and 15th chapter. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival on unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray Jesus to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So Judas began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb was sacrificed, that evening Jesus came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, the one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and say to him one after another, Surely not I. Jesus said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread. And after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. Jesus said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it not new in the kingdom of God. And Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly, I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But Peter said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. Then all of them said the same.
Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. Then Jesus said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep awake. Why do we still need witnesses? 
You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophecy, the guards also took him over and beat him. Him, 
After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests along with the scribes were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others, but he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing Jesus saw that it, in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was God's son. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, saw where the body was laid. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ.
but it, I, in my sermon, I'm going to try and tie the different readings together and also fill in a few blank spots. So in our processional gospel, we said the word Hosanna, which is in the Bible followed by verse 26 of Psalm 118. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Now we've come to equate those two lines rather than distinguish them. We use Hosanna as a praise word when the Hebrew word literally means save us, we beseech you, O Lord. I think we've lost some of the meaning in translation. For save us, we beg you, is not the same as woo-woo, go Jesus. We think you're awesome. We tend to think that in a moment's time, Jesus fell in an instant from fame and popularity. But I would say that even when people don't realize what they say and do, their words and actions could speak of a deeper need. While we would rather cheer, I wonder if even as we do that, God doesn't hear, save us, we beg you, Lord. So remember that the next time you give Hosanna a shout. As I read the processional gospel today, I never noticed before that Jesus said, tell them I'll use the colt and send it back immediately. If it was my cult, that would be a pretty important detail that I would want to know. And I guess when they said, the Lord needs it, and we'll send it back right away, the proposal sounded rather honest. According to Harper's Study Bible, Mark intentionally gives Jesus the title of the Lord here. It's intentional. And it's the same title that he used at the end of the longer version of his gospel text, where he also refers to Jesus by saying, the Lord Jesus will be taken up into heaven and seated at the right hand of God. Mark doesn't want you to mistake who we're talking about. This Jesus is the very same Lord. The language in Isaiah uses this phrase again, the Lord helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced, but set my face like flint. The words of Isaiah help to counterbalance the tone of Mark's passion narrative where Jesus appears disgraced and vulnerable as the amount of suffering was unbearable. Jesus felt that God had forgotten their agreement and failed to see how much pain he could take. But Jesus knew he wasn't alone. Who was he speaking to as he cried about feeling abandoned if he really thought he had been abandoned? Think about that. The psalmist echoed words that I've heard spoken by a number of you lately. As you struggle with health issues of your own or are concerned for a loved one, You've shared with me that your prayers have been similar to the psalmist's. I trust you, Lord. I don't know what else to do or say. You are my God. I've come to see that my time and the time of people that I love are in your hand. But could you rescue me from this time of trial? Also echoed in the psalm are those words spoken as a blessing upon you every single Sunday. May the Lord's face shine upon you. Does that sound familiar? Now one thing that was confusing was that in this abridged version of the gospel reading, they left out a few very important accounts that really talk about how Jesus had received all the provision he needed before the trial began. First, he's anointed by the woman with the alabaster jar. He was anointed like Saul was anointed in Samuel 10.1. He was anointed by the Lord 
as a leader over God's inheritance. Like Saul and Jehu in 2 Kings, Jesus was anointed as king in the midst of controversy. Prior to his arrest, he had already received the power to rule over his enemies and deliver God's people. We cut out that whole part about where they're all sitting around the table and Jesus says, one of you will betray me. As we track the path of Judas as he leaves and goes and speaks to the priests, we see the betrayal happens over time. It doesn't always happen in an instant, although it can. Through Judas, we see the betrayal it means that you include others in your plot, that you speak against a person to several others and spend time and thought looking for an opportunity and possible way to betray them. Things that we do, we aren't Judas, but we do those things. So one thing we miss is that overarching view of Jesus every time he tells his disciples and us what's about to happen. So in the same way that Jesus knew that there was an unbridled colt tied near a door, he also talked to them about how there was a man who'd be carrying a jar of water and that the disciples' path would intersect with that man and they were to follow him to the house where they would have the Last Supper. He was able to give specific instructions about where to find what was needed and even what his disciples should say. In each of those little vignettes, a compelling argument to cooperate with the proposal rested upon who was doing the asking. Who wants this cult? Who wants this room? At first it was the Lord, and then it was the teacher. At the table set with wine and bread, the disciples receive another revelation, but this time what Jesus told them was really disturbing, because it was about them. They knew the accuracy of his clairvoyance. He hadn't been wrong yet. So no wonder they each started to doubt themselves. The fact that Jesus foreknew and foretold of his betrayal was not a way of showing off, but it was his way of reassuring the disciples and us that as the Lord and as the teacher, nothing was going to happen that would surprise him. Even betrayal would serve a divine purpose just like the cult in the upper room. Jesus would have what he needed at every moment during his passion and would fulfill the destiny of eternity. So he also predicted that when he, the shepherd, would be struck and his sheep would scatter, the divine purpose again would be served. Finally, through our reading, we discover that even when we know God's at work and that divine purpose is being served, that that doesn't prevent Jesus or us from distress and agitation when people and circumstances disappoint. When our plans don't go as we wish, we, like Jesus, might have to admit that it's because the people around us don't have the capacity to see where we're coming from or be where we are at the moment. At the time, for whatever reason, they literally cannot share our experience of suffering, longing, or grief. In such moments, Jesus shares our disappointment and even our despair, and then demonstrates rather than tells us how our needs will be met. I'd like you to focus on that stained glass window his instruction is this. He demonstrates. Fall on your knees in prayer. Get into the same posture and pray with the same fervor that you've depicted in this image of me above your altar. Pray with me. 
with passion ask for mercy and to be spared. Know all things are possible. Acknowledge and submit to God's, to God's divine purpose as if you were the unwritten colt. Whenever you feel tethered, tired of waiting, and left wondering what life's about, imagine the day that you're summoned to God's purpose. Jesus says, don't be discouraged or think you suffer alone. Because like the disciples, your friends and family may not have the same problems as you. They may sleep just fine and go about their lives as though unaffected by your woes. And like the disciples, your friends and family may not know what to say and repeatedly disappoint you. Jesus says, in the midst of your troubles, you may even discover, like me, that you've come to the end of your time, never getting the satisfaction of seeing anything change. Even though you have the support of hundreds, you may still come to a time of resignation like me, realizing that the journey before you is yours alone to take. In faith, I ask us to pray a repeat after me prayer, the way I often use with the children, so that we would collectively own the words of Psalm 119, verses 4 through 14 through 16, again. Please repeat after me. But as for me, but as for me I trust confidently in you. I trust confidently in you. And your greatness, Lord. And your greatness, Lord. I say, I say you are my God. You are my God. My times and those that I love are in your hand. Hosanna, save me. Hosanna, save me. From the hand of my enemies. From the hand of my enemies. From whatever pursues and threatens me. From whatever pursues and threatens me. Let your face shine upon me. Let your face shine upon me. Your servant. Your servant. Save me for your mercy's sake. Save me for your mercy's sake. By your loving kindness. And steadfast love. And steadfast love. Amen.
Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. Suffering servant of Jesus, give your church the ability, redeem us from pride, and to ensure that we always know what you want. Give us courage and confidence to confess belief in your power. Hear us above. Spirit, you reveal things in every single thing. We praise you for the instruction and faith you have given to people in all places of life. Give us faith to trust the promises of God for you, sealed by you. We anticipate our place in the resurrection of the dead. Hear us, O God. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O, o faithful God. Sorry, I really do want to. 
want to say a prayer for everything that's going on in the world. Not that we hadn't tried to include them in the rest of the prayers. Lord, as our country and the world deals with the effects of violence in many forms and also grief in many forms that are tied to both human and natural events, we ask for wisdom and understanding for that cooperation, knowing that you ask us to cooperate for the good of all. Inspire those who lead and those who take action to pray about your will before they act. Hear us, O God. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Believe it or not, I'm going to do the children's sermon now because I forgot before. Can I ask the children to come forward, please?
the same gift that I got from my church about the love of God and then hand them the bag. All right? And that's going to be your first evangelism. Isn't that going to be exciting? Are you nervous? No, don't be nervous because you're giving them a gift, right? So we get nervous about evangelism, but it's really giving people a gift. And then you all that were not here yesterday, you get to have one for you and then one for a friend, okay? Okay, go ahead and help yourselves. You can pass those out. So you can take two. Take one for you and one to give away. And then, like I said, those who got them yesterday, you're going to be giving them away. So don't mix up your stuff. So Jackson, you should have two. Your brother should have two. Oh, well, he's, you're going to give it to somebody you don't know. It's going to go to a stranger. <laughs> like your neighbor. Somebody that lives near you or somebody that you know from school or that you play with. So you take two as well. Oh, wait. Okay. Can somebody run downstairs and get me another bag? Who knows where they are? Okay, we're going to say a prayer while Miss Joanna goes and gets that other bag, okay? Can we all go back in our circle again? So I know that you're with me. Okay. Darcy, you get two and two when they come back, okay? Make sure you get two of them. What do you have there, Brady? Want to tell me what you got there? And what kind of bunny is it? Do you know the name of that bunny? Thanks. Oh, well, there's another name for it. So if you take out that egg, you can put an ice cube in there when you hurt yourself. We used to have one of those around my house. We call it the boo-boo bunny. <laughs> so that little hole that holds the egg will actually also hold a nice ice cube. And then if you get a boo-boo, you say, where's that boo-boo bunny? And put it on your finger. So it can be more or longer than Easter. Okay, let's say a prayer. Dear Lord. <coughs> Thank you for the gifts you give us every day. Help us practice sharing them and telling the good news of your love for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Darcy's the other one, so maybe you can get, get one for her. Okay, so this one goes to Thank you. All right, you are dismissed. Oh, it's for me? Then I have a boo-boo bunny. Thank you so much. Aww. Okay, so we will now say the blessing that was part of our song today and the Lord's Prayer. Ready? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
participation today. We'll go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.